Welcome into this place that we call Virtuous Sanctuary. I hope and pray that throughout this day, you have seen God's hand operating in your life. Yes, I hope you have witnessed that God is on your side. Yes, I want to say to you tonight, you may have some problems, but you have more promises than problems. You have more solutions than questions. I want to say this to you tonight, that you have more going for you. Oof, I felt that. That you have going against you. I want to say to you tonight, stop counting. Stop counting who's for you. Because there are more that you can't count. I feel Jesus. I, I, I want to say to you tonight that don't operate in carnality. Don't operate by what you can see with your natural eyes. I want to say to you tonight, for those of you who can receive this, that there's more working for you behind the scenes than what you can see with your natural eye. I want you to believe that God, yes, God, God is behind the scenes making all of this fit together like it ought to fit, fit together. That this is no accident. That it is playing out the way that it ought to play out. And if we can receive that all of this is a part of the master's plan, we won't trip out when we fall, James says, into diverse temptation. He says, count it all joy, knowing that the trying of your faith, it is producing patience inside of you. So if you're going through a trial, Oh, I feel Jesus. God is producing something inside of you that was necessary. Here it is to get you to where he's taking you. David said it was good that I was afflicted. Why? Because where I was during the affliction was necessary to get me to where I had to go. You got to stop cursing when you have opposition. You got to stop cursing when you have difficult times in life. And you have to realize, we quoted Romans 8 and 28, all this is working together for good to those who love him and to those who are called according to his purpose. And tonight I want to say to the few of you that God has a purpose behind all of this. Yes, we attempt to try to figure it out. And God did not call us to figure life out. Here it is. God called us to live by faith. Because faith doesn't know all the answers. I'm about to scream here. But faith knows who has the answers. And because God has the answers, the just, we're going to live by faith. We're not going to live by what they said. We're going to live by what he says. We're not going to be focused on what it looks like in the natural we're going to be focused on what is going on in the spiritual. And so tonight I want to say to you, don't count it. You're wasting your time counting who's against you. Because there are more who are for you. You have to invest the time in those who are part of the journey. If you get sidetracked based off who's opposing you, you will lose focus of what the mission is. And I want to say to the few of you tonight who can receive this, because of the mission is so great on your life, you don't have another second to waste with people who can't go to where you're going. You can't, focus, you can't force relationship. You can't force people to like you and to approve of you. You were not created to be approved of. You were already approved of when God gave you life. You were already accepted when God gave you life. You were already loved when God gave you life. And because you was already approved and because you was already accepted and because you're already loved, you got to go ahead. Who? Somebody say that. I got to go ahead with my life. My God. Let us get into our text tonight. Pray with me if you will. Father, we thank you this evening 
mm, mm, that you are still God. And because you are God, we have confidence that where we are at this moment in our lives is necessary to get us to where we're going. So tonight, speak to our hearts. Let your word become alive to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're in our series, Triggers and Traps. Last week, we focus on deadly anger. Deadly anger. Um, tonight, I want you to join me in Matthew's chapter 5, verse 23 to 24. And we'll launch out from there and we'll go as far as we can. Um, that time will permit us. In Matthew chapter 5, same pericope we were in last week. We did 21 and 22, verses 21 to 22. We'll jump into verse 23 and 24. And the scriptures declares there, Matthew's writing says, Therefore, mm, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, Leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. I want to read that again. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. I, I want to talk to you tonight about the journey towards reconciliation. The journey towards reconciliation. Somebody put it down there at the bottom of the screen. The journey towards reconciliation. Now, in, 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 in this Sermon on the Mountain, Jesus preaches on murder. He quotes the Old Testament law that we find in the Ten Commandments that say, you shall not murder. But then Jesus goes on and says, but I tell you. In other words, how they had been looking at the Ten Commandments and the law. They had not understood the heart of God. So Jesus says, but I tell you, I'm not changing the law. Here it is. I'm not writing a new law. But what I'm telling you, I am revealing the heart of God as it pertains to the law. I am revealing the standard of God. And so Jesus says in verse 22, he says, but I say to you. Or I tell you that if anyone is angry with a brother, with a sister, that that person will be subject to judgment. Again, he says, if anyone who says to his brother or sister, these are the words we talked about last week, Raka is answerable to the court. And if anyone says you fool will be in danger of the fire or hell's fire. And so Jesus is warning here in this text, and I'm giving us a recap to be able to go deeper to our text tonight. Jesus is warning us that hate in one's heart is as sinful as hate demonstrated. That God is more concerned about the heart that the actions are one thing. But God not only judges the actions, God judges the very heart and our thoughts. So in this context, a God who judges our hearts, our thoughts, and as we said last week, the words, rock, foolish God, God is going to judge our words, what comes out of our mouths. And if anybody can control their mouths, then they can live right. Uh, many of the issues we have with people, we have in life, we have with relationships, uh, is because some person don't know how to communicate. 
And if you're going to be a mighty person of God, you have to be an effective communicator. Somebody put that down, that my speech game has to go up. That I have to be more effective at how I communicate. People who fail to be effective communicators get upset when they can't articulate what's in their minds and what's in their hearts. And so we have to become better uh, communicators. Somebody put that out there. I have to become a better communicator. I don't care what area in your life that you're in. I don't care what position you may have, what responsibilities you may have. We all have to be effective communicators. And so in this pericope, in this text tonight, in these verses um, that was read into your hearing, uh, um, Jesus is bringing us into a context. And Jesus is teaching us something about offense. He's teaching us some about anger. He says, therefore, put it back on the screen. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. Now, that, that may seem um, not a big deal at the initial reading to just leave and go reconcile. But I want you to understand Jesus is not saying get back in your car and drive around the corner. That's not what Jesus is saying. Jesus is not saying walk down the street and tell your neighbor we need to reconcile. The audience in which Jesus is teaching in um, is an audience where people have come to sacrifice at the temple, here it is, in Jerusalem. Why is that important? Jesus is in Galilee right now, which is about 70 miles away from Jerusalem. So the family doesn't travel to Jerusalem Often, there were certain times of the year they would go to make offerings. But this is a special occasion. Somebody put that out in the text. Special occasion. Huh? Because harvest time has come. And apparently, there has been a productive harvest. I want to start right there. There has been a productive harvest. And Jesus is saying to somebody that, that who, who must have been grateful for what God has done for them, that they're on their way to Jerusalem, perhaps to give a free will offering. We won't get into the different types of offering tonight, but he was coming to bring a free will offering offering. And Jesus says, look at the text, Jesus says, uh, while you're there at the altar, that the Holy Spirit convicts you in your heart, and you remember, that is, you remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Mm. <laughs> something. No, notice the text is not very specific. It didn't say if your brother or sister has sinned against you because everything that somebody has against you is not necessarily a sin. He said, if you remember that they have something against you, go and be reconciled. If they have something against you, here, here, here's our issue. Our issue is that we focus so much on things that really does not offend us. We focus on things that people have bought to us and now we're walking around with this sense of, of offense or someone has done something to you and then when you ask the person what has been done to them, they can't articulate what has been done to them because they are carrying the message of somebody else. I want to talk to you tonight um, that the issue is <laughs> the issue is because um, people are quickly to accept the negative energy that comes from Satan. They are quickly to gather opinions uh, and gather opposition or gather something against you. But notice the text. Jesus said, if you know they have something against you 
Oh, read the text again. <laughs> Put it on the screen so they can see it. Uh, Jesus says, there it is. Uh, remember that your brother has something against you. Uh, he's not saying the offender going to you, but you going to the person who's holding something against you. And many of you, many of us are walking around and people are holding things in their heart that you don't even know. And they are complaining and they're griping about something you don't even know. Jesus says, before you off offer your, your gift to God, whatever it is they have against you, he says, uh, leave your gift at the altar. Somebody put it down at the screen. Leave it at the altar. Leave it at the the altar now 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 the statement that Jesus says leave it at the altar and go and be reconciled to your brother um the audience in which he is talking to when they heard Jesus say this uh, they would have been stunned they would have been taken back and here's the reason why Jesus is saying to go and make peace with them to be reconciled to become one again to unite with them again uh, to reconcile me to pull it back as if it was prior to the something and what Jesus is pointing out I hope you can hear this uh, that reconciliation don't make me scream in here tonight, <laughs> is more important than religion. Somebody put that down. Reconciliation is more important than religion. That, 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 that God is more concerned about reconciliation than he is about your piety in your religious performance. And so Jesus says, you are 70 miles away from the individual who may have something against you. Here it is. But I want you to leave your gift at the altar and go and be reconciled to someone who may be 70 miles away. Point number one on the journey to reconciliation. That reconciliation sometimes can be inconvenient. <laughs> Come up for air. Jesus didn't say uh, um, he's concerned about your convenience. He's concerned about reconciliation. Um, and notice what the verse does not do. The verse doesn't tell us whether the individual is guilty or innocent. It doesn't matter whether they're guilty or innocent. See, we live in a society that wants to measure um, what's, who's right and who's wrong. But our righteousness in God's eyes, help me tonight, uh, is as filthy rags. There is no, not one who's righteous. Uh, that we're righteous through the blood of Christ. So how dare us uh, try to say who is more right than the other? Jesus says, if your brother has something against you, whether it's rightfully or wrongfully, whether it's intentional or unintentional, Jesus said you should go and talk about it to be reconciled to the one who is offended. Are you breathing tonight? Jesus says you have to make every effort to go to be reconciled. So not only is reconciliation an inconvenience, huh? reconciliation requires effort. See, so we live in a, a society that thinks just saying I'm sorry is reconciling. No sorry is saying that I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm more concerned about emotionally what I did to you and I want you to forgive me for what I emotionally did to you and then you go by your way and assuming that things will pick back up. That's not what reconciliation is. Reconciliation says I want to make sure we heal to get back to where we once were. And when we get back to what we, was, what we once were, we're stronger now because the wound has healed. And there's no open wounds in the relationship. And now we can go ahead with our life. He said, if you have, they have something against you, go to your brother. We better go deeper into this. Are you ready for this? The journey towards reconciliation. Uh, uh, join me, if you will, um, briefly, if you will. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15 through 17. Jesus gives us the process on how or the steps to take on this journey towards reconciliation. 
He gives us the process. He gives the process. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 15 through 17, Jesus says these words, and these are the words about the journey towards reconciliation. He says, if your brother or sister sins against you, this is the NIV version, New International Version, go and point out their fault. Just between, here it is, the two of you. Step one, the two of you. Take it. If, if, if your brother or sister sins, notice in chapter five, it says have something against. It didn't say sin, something against. Something that you should be able to just work out. But sinning is on a whole nother scale. They, they intentionally did something against you. They scandalized your name. They tried to make you look um, ridiculous in front of the brothers and sisters. They did something to your person to try to try to make you uh, come out of your character. Jesus said, if they sin against you, go and point out their fault. See, here, here, here's what we struggle at. I'm already on point three. Inconvenience, reconciliation, the journey towards reconciliation, it, 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 it causes a lot of inconvenience. Point two, it causes a lot of effort. Here, the third thing here is we struggle with pointing out the fault. Because many of us, what we call sinning against us, there's no basis to what we say is sinning against us. That the level of maturity, God help me tonight, huh? the level of the maturity of some of the saints need to come up. Just because someone speak to you, then speak to you, that is not a sin. Just because someone did not call you or invite you, that is not a sin. Just because someone uh, honked their horns at you, that is not a sin. Just because you saw someone talking to or hanging out with someone who you have disagreements with, that is not a sin. Just because people don't agree with you how things should get done and how we should do it, that, that is not a sin. Jesus says, go and point out their fault. And here's where we're about to take off. Point three. Just between the two of you. I almost just heard the song, Just the Two of Us. Just point out the fault between the two of you. Jesus didn't say go to Facebook, go to social media. He didn't say get on your phone, start texting people and say, look at what they did to me. He didn't say begin to call folks and say, I can't believe what they, let me tell you about what they just did to me. Because oftentimes when people go and try to contact other folks instead of going directly to the person who have sinned against them, they're trying to build up a crowd, here it is, uh, to approve their point of view. And so they try to get as many people as they can to agree with them, to approve of their point of view. And so they really are not looking for reconciliation. Now, they're looking for judgment based off their point of view. I want to say this to somebody tonight. It's difficult to be reconciled to someone who is the prosecutor, who's the judge, and who's the jury because they've already made their minds up about the situation. And you can't move ahead with your life when you got, you've got already been brought before the court with the prosecutor. You've already got the judge who has his mind made up. You already have a jury who has his mind made up. And that jury, that judge and prosecutor is saying guilty. Jesus said, no, don't go and tell everybody. Go to that person and see can you work it out. <laughs> see, that's how you know you're mature. When you don't take what happened to you and try to spread it around. But what you do is you go to that person. See, many of us really don't understand what Christianity, falling Christ is all about. The Bible that says, declares that love, here it is, covers whew, a multitude of sin. Love never exposes Love cover. And so if you're in the business of exposing, we have to question ourselves if we're walking in love. Jesus says, demonstrate this by walking in love and go and point out the fault to your brother. That, 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 is, that is step number three in this process. Huh? We start in Matthew chapter five again. Jesus said it's inconvenient. 
You have to go a long way sometimes, huh? Just to start the process of reconciliation, huh? You got to go a long way. You have to meet people where they are. Step two, Jesus says, it's going to require a lot of effort. A whole lot of effort, huh? The reconciliation huh, is not just a simple thing saying I'm sorry, but you got to work at it, huh? You got to you got to show the other party that you're serious about being reconciled. Huh? But it takes two to tangle. You you can't reconcile to someone who don't want to reconcile to you. I don't want you to get stuck in chasing somebody. You can't chase people. Huh? You can go out there and you can put effort in to be reconciled. Huh? But some people are they call it unreconcilable differences. They don't want to be reconciled. And the relationship cannot work, the Bible says, unless two agree together. That we have to agree that we're coming to this person of reconciliation. But Jesus says, don't go and point the fallout to everybody. That's one of the reasons some of us can't be reconciled. Because we are going to tell everybody all of our business. And now these people are upset with the person who you have an issue with. And now this group over here is upset that with the person you have an issue with. But if you only start it by going to that person first. Now everybody is upset because one individual decided to try to expose their offenses. And I'm going to tell you tonight why, you, why you're here online with me this night. Um, the Bible says before you remove the splinter out of your brother or sister eye, make sure you take the log out of your eye. And so many of us try to act like we don't have issues. To be a human is to have issues. Uh, if you live long enough, I'm about to scream, uh, somebody's going to find fault with something that you do. If you live long enough, somebody's not going to agree with the things that you do. Uh, and many of us, we haven't lived long enough. But if you live long enough, you will find everybody's not going to like you. Everybody's not going to approve of you. Everyone is not going to accept you. But you got to do all you can to walk in love. In fact, Paul said, oh, man, oh no man, anything except to love them. Jesus says, so you got to go, number three, you got to go and to that person. Not social media. Not on the phone. And Jesus said, if they listen to you, put the scriptures back on the text, on the screen. If they listen to you, you have won them over. So part of reconciliation then is having an open ear. Ooh, let me say that again. Part of reconciliation is being someone who's able to have an open ear. You can't have your mind made up already when someone is trying to reconcile the relationship. You can't be stubborn as a mule if you're going to be reconciled. I don't want to hear what they got to say. What they did to me it hurt me so bad. I would never forgive them. And you just felt it to the trap of Satan. Say, so say, I got them exactly what I want to have them. Huh? That I want them in a place of unforgiveness huh? so they can't move ahead with your life. Let me pause right here for a commercial break. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 25, I'm mean, excuse me, Matthew chapter 5, verse 23, leave your gift at the altar. Here's the commercial break. That Jesus says you can't go any further in your life. Wow. Huh? Where there's a break of, breaking of relationship. Whoa, that's heavy right there. The Jesus says, uh, the place you are in your life right now, you can't go any farther until you be reconciled. Wow, I feel Jesus. Huh? Could it be that you're where you are now that you ought to be further, but you can't go further because there's some people, I feel Jesus, uh, that you need to be reconciled to? It's not that God don't have greatness prepared for you. It's not that God doesn't have a journey, a destiny prepared, uh, prepared for you. But you can't go further on the journey until you turn back to the journey of reconciliation. Restore that relationship so you can go ahead with your life. And that's where many of us may find ourselves. Wondering why everything is not taken off. Wondering why we're not further in life. Because God is sending out a principle to us um, with, where there's no reconciliation. I feel Jesus in here. Not, there is no progress. My God. Now, where there is no reconciliation, there is no progress. Where there is no healing, there is no progress. Because God does not bless division. 
You need to hear that tonight. Huh? I, I'm still in my commercial break. God does not, he does not bless the vision. Here it is. Not, not only does God not bless the vision, he does not give provision where there is the vision. God is not going to allow us to bear his name and walk around in the spirit of unforgiveness. I want you to hear this until your spirit hears. God is not going to allow us to bear his name and walk around with the spirit of unforgiveness. Devil, you a lie. I hear you. God is not going to allow you to carry that burden, to carry that hate, to carry that anger, and receive his blessings at the same time. So he says, leave your gift at the altar, because as long as it's concerning me and you, that is, God and you, God is saying, we can't go further. We can't go further because the cross is vertical and horizontal. God said, you can't be right with me and wrong with them. He says, so in order for us to go further, I feel Jesus in here. In order for us to go further, I need you to get it right with them uh, so you can get it right with me. And when you get it right with them and get it right with me, we're going to go further in your life. I hope this is blessing somebody tonight. Uh, you need to go through your phone, go through your social media account. You need to pray and ask God to show you who you need to go to be reconciled so you can go ahead with your life. Don't allow the devil to operate in your life with the spirit of anger, the spirit of malice, bitterness, uh, uh, resentment. Don't allow that to happen in your life um, because what God has prepared for you, it, unforgiveness ain't, is not worth it. <laughs> Uh, contentment towards others is not worth it. If you knew the magnitude, I feel Jesus in here, if you knew the magnitude of what God wants to bring into your life, uh, you would have laid that unforgiveness down a long time ago. Uh, I'm praying tonight that, that the devil be exposed and we break every stronghold that the enemy is trying to hold you down with. Uh, I want to declare, I feel God, I want to declare to you tonight uh, that it is tonight that we're working towards recognition Reconciliation. We're not going to allow the devil to steal another day, another week, another month, another year because he's had too much time and he's trying to destroy your journey and your destination because that devil knows that God does not dwell in confusion. That God dwells in unity. Here's the scripture. When brothers and sisters are together in unity, I feel him. Huh? Their God commands the blessing. And so if you want the blessing of God, you have to walk in unity. And the only way you can get to unity, you have to be reconciled to your brother. Now we're back at our we're back at the original show. We're back at our original show. And so Jesus says, um, um, if they listen to you, you have warned them over. You if they listen, if they got an open ear, that they are if they're serious, if they're serious about reconciliation, and if they'll listen to you and don't hear with their emotions. Here there it is. That they're not they're not they're not moving based off emotions. They are hearing in the spirit if they hear the sincerity oh you say listen I, I'm sorry I didn't mean to offend you it wasn't my intent to offend you I'm asking you to forgive me and asking you to let us move ahead with our relationship because we're bigger than this our relationship my relationship with you is more important than what you thought I was intended to offend you there was never my intent to offend you and so I want to apologize and I want to get it right with you. I'm asking you to forgive me. That was the th those are the type of conversation that we have to have. And Stella's saying, uh, I ain't going to never forgive them. What they did to me, I'm, uh, I'm, no I'm going to carry that for the rest of my life. And when you make that statement, you have signed your own certificate of being stagnant or standing where you are. So Jesus said, if you hear the, if they hear you, you want them over. But then he gives us another clause inside the legislation. He gives us another clause. Jesus says, but if they would not listen, some people are hard of hearing. He said, but if they would not listen, here it is, the next step, step, step number four. He says, take one or two others along with you. <laughs> that every matter may be established by the testimony, yes, uh, of two or three witnesses. 
let me say it this way that you take one of two don't take all your friends on Facebook and social media. Don't run to the newspaper. Don't run to um, the phone. Don't start texting people. Jesus say take one or two. And you don't take one or two and tell them your side of the story first. See, that's, that's what some of us do. Don't tell them your side of the story. You take one or two and say, listen, me and my brother, me and my sister, we have a wedge that's between us. And I want to do all I can and my might and my power to restore the relationship. Because what God has for us, I feel him. Our God is bigger than this wedge that the enemy is trying to put between us. Devil, you a lie. Uh, it's bigger than the wedge that the enemy is trying to put between us. I need you as witnesses to come with me so I can pour out my heart and ask for reconciliation that you can help both sides of the story. I'm not going to give you my side of the story up front because I'm not looking for people to agree with my side. I'm looking for someone to bring balance to the situation because that if they can bring balance and say, listen, you were wrong, then it gives more credibility to the offense. But then at the same time, they can bring balance and say that was an offensive, what they were doing to you. They was only pointing out truth to you. And so we can reach a point of reconciliation. The Bible says two or three witnesses bearing testimony according to what has transpired between them. And then Jesus says, that's step number four, that you got to find two, one or two witnesses. Uh, I told you it take effort. To be reconciled. It's not going to happen overnight. Reconciliation is a process. That's why we're on a journey. Somebody say a process. It's a process. Huh? Because sometimes the hurt can be so deep. Because there's other wounds that you may have opened up. That is a process. So you take two or three, Jesus says, to be reconciled to your brother. To be reconciled to your brother. And so Jesus is talking about reconciliation. The process, the journey towards rec uh, um, um, reconciliation. In fact, Galatians chapter 6 verse 1 um, says, Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit shall restore the person, what? Gently. There it is. Uh, um, and so that's, that's, that's what we ought to be doing. But Jesus says in this situation, if, 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 if you can't restore them gently, take these witnesses and you humbly talk to the person who's offended. And you begin to talk to them. And the witnesses are there with you. And so you have witnesses there with you to help guide the process or reconciliation and so who's the person to bring witnesses not the person who's offended so we got it backwards <laughs> the person who offended going to get everybody on their side but the person who's done the offense take two one or two witnesses with them in this case the plaintiff the person who's initiating the conversation and you're still trying to correct them gently here it is and notice it's still in private hmm it's still in private. And why do we have these witnesses? We have the witnesses because sometimes they can see the blind spots that we don't see. See, sometimes we can be blinded by our own righteousness. That we think we were right when actuality, we may have been wrong. The witnesses can not only see our blind spots, but they serve as mediators. Mediators. Um... They're the, the mediators, and so and so. What we see then, um, um, we we try to find a place of reconciliation with, in private with a small group. Jesus says, "You go from the individual to now to a small group. Everybody ought not to know your business." Somebody put that down in the chat. Everybody ought not to know your business. It's supposed to be between you and the offended person. And then from there, it should only be between three to four of you all. You, the person who's been offended, and the one of two witnesses. So the most that should be aware of it is four. 
If the whole church know about it, if the whole community know about it, we're not walking in love. We're walking as the world walk. Jesus says, step number five. We got to get out of here. He says, if they still refuse to listen to the small group, go and tell the whole church. Go and tell the ecclesia. Ecclesia is the body of believers. It is the assembly. It is the congregation. Now, he says, go and tell the church. And the church job is to be able to manage the household of God. The, the, the passage, and I want to help somebody here. The passage is not saying go and tell everybody inside the church. That's not what the passage is saying. The, the passage is not going to tell everybody inside the church about an individual sin. Rather, the, the Bible is saying, Jesus is saying, this is as a courtroom. And that God, the church, is as a courtroom. Remember, Jesus says, um, um, and, 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 and in fact, the same Right below this, the next two verses, Jesus says, Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. In fact, put it up on the screen here. Um, verse chapter 18, verse 18. Jesus said, There it is, Assuredly I say to you, Whatever you bind on earth, same text, will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth, will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth, that is reconciliation. I'm, 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 I'm about to scream in here. Concerning anything that they act, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, unity, reconciliation, oh, I feel Jesus. He says, there I am in the midst of them. God dwells in reconciliation. Who in that good stuff? God dwells where there's a reconciled relationship. In this process, in this pericope we're talking about, Jesus is talking about someone offended. And he talks about the the the, the the offense, the person being offended, and talks about the journey towards reconciliation. He says, take it to the church. Because the church, I have given the church, the elders inside the church, I, I've given them the power of judges. Hmm. I've given them the responsibility. Ah, Jesus. I've given them responsibility of representing heaven's interests. When it comes to this conflict, I've given the elders of the church the responsibility of reconciling or to dealing with the conflict or, or, or the tension. And Jesus says here that if, if it doesn't work, my, treat that person as a tax collector. Hmm. Treat, treat them like a tax collector If you go through all these steps Here it is uh, Let me reverse this We're about to get out of here And close the time together tonight Jesus says Reconciliation is inconvenient Matthew chapter 5 Leave your gift at the altar And go and be reconciled 70 miles to Jerusalem 70 miles back to, to Galilee He said not only is it inconvenient It takes effort that if you're going to be reconciled, you got to put in the work. Somebody say put in the work. Thirdly, Jesus says to us in Matthew chapter 18, he said, if you're fine, go and point out the fault. Mm -hmm. Go to your brother in private. Yes, there, there it is. So he said, if you go into private, they hear you, you warn them over. He said, but the fourth step, if they don't hear you, take one of two witnesses. Fifth step, he says, if they don't hear, then take them before the congregation. The elders, don't share the said with everybody, but those who God has placed inside of the church, the assembly, to rule. He says, take it before them. But then he said, if they don't hear them, treat them as a text collector. I want to say this to you tonight, and I want to leave on this note, huh, that when Jesus says at the latter part of of chapter 18 verse 18 to 19 I want to I want to I want to put this in your hearing again he says surely I say to you whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven Hmm, that's 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 good right there. Understanding the context in which Jesus is saying this. Jesus is saying when there's reconciliation 
Matthew 5, you can't go ahead with your life. You can't move from where you are until you reconcile. But Jesus said, once there's reconciliation, I'm about to, if I can scream in your ear, Jesus saying, uh, that can't nothing stop you when you're reconciled. What is stopping you now is that there's no reconciliation. Verse 19, he says, uh, again, if you didn't hear it the first time, Jesus said, let me double down on it. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Who are the two? The ones who had the wedge between them. And God said, if you can get back together with every y'all ask in my name, huh? he said, I'm going to do it for you. Why? Because you're practicing the ministry of reconciliation. I feel Jesus. Huh? He, God said, you operating like me now. I came to reconcile the world back to myself. Huh? I came to redeem the world back to myself. Let me recap that again for you. To be redeemed means to purchase back what is yours. Huh? That I came to get back what was mine. To reconcile means to, or to reconcile or to restore means to get back into the same position that it was uh, prior to the, 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 the blemish. And so God said, when you reconcile, I'm, I'm, you need to hear this in your spirit. God said, when you practice the ministry of reconciliation, you're behaving like me. When you practice the, 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 the ministry of going the long mile, he came from glory all the way down to earth to save us. When you willing to put in the work, the Bible said they beat him all the way up that hill to Calvary. And when you put in the work, huh? Jesus said, when I came to you, huh? he said, when I came to you, I went through all of these steps to get you reconciled back to me. He said, now, if you go through the process, there it is. If you go through the process, huh? God said, you're acting like me. And when you're acting like me, he said, whatever you ask, hey, God, huh? whatever you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. Here it is, and I'm about to get out of here. He says, for wherever two or three, where the third person come from, that's step number four, where Jesus says, go and get one or two witnesses. He said, well, for wherever two or three are gathered together in my name. Uh, somebody said, this is when I got past the individual, and I finally got them to hear me out. Jesus said, if y'all get together, he said, whatever y'all ask in my name, Knowing that I, when you gather together in my name, Jesus said, know that I'm in the midst of them. We've quoted this scripture so often and we've misunderstood the context. The context is when you reconcile yourself. Hey, God, you'll find Jesus. When you reconcile yourselves to one another, we'll find Jesus. I want to know tonight if anyone is looking for Jesus. If you want to find him, go and reconcile yourself to those who are opposing you. Go and reconcile yourself. There he dwells in the midst of us. If we're gathered together in his name, he says, I'm in the midst of them. Brothers and sisters, it's a long journey towards reconciliation. And I want to say to you tonight, it's a journey that's worth it. You will work God taking on the form of a servant, humbling himself even to the point of death. God came a long way, I feel Jesus, to get you. He wants us to go a long way to reach each other. The cross is both vertical and horizontal. How far are you willing to go to be reconciled to your brother, to be reconciled to your sister? Let's pull in the work and be reconciled. Let us pray as we leave this place. Father, we thank you tonight hmm, for the ministry of reconciliation. I pray tonight for those who are listening that they will search their hearts and ask of you, I ask you on their behalf and I ask them, I ask God that they will also do the same to show us who we need to be reconciled. But not just show us, provide an opportunity, God that we may be reconciled to our brothers and sisters. Open up a door. God, open up a door. Let it be so clear as day that when the opportunity presents itself, we will know that's the moment. Hmm. We will know that's the moment. God, we need reconciliation. We need healing in our relationships. Give us the words to say and let our hearts, God, be tender enough to receive. That those who are offended, God, test their hearts that they may hear our hearts as we move towards reconciliation. 
Now, Father, as we leave this place from never your grace, we thank you for this time and this moment. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his counsels upon you and give you peace. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. And remember, I love you to life.